Hello and welcome to Hardcast, where we attempt regicide on a time-displaced Visigoth. I'm Humphrey Erm. And I'm Christian Claus. Lifeline, give me Unity Volume 1 to kill a king. All right, Chris. So, honestly, first and foremost, immediate thoughts. Um, it was good. <laughs> Better than the last uh, <laughs> one that we read. Um yeah it was it was good it was it was very it, it felt like a very basic comic very basic comic. super heroics yeah yeah that's that's better put it's it's very it's a very superhero comic yeah but you know it's good that's that's why it kind of it works you know that's why these kind of stories work yeah i, I was i got a bit of um I don't know, sort of not deja, deja vu, I guess, but sort of like a little flashback to when I first read it, because this was part okay. of the Humble Bundle as well. And I think this was one of the first ones I started reading. I don't think I finished it that first, though, because I was a bit confused. Again, because you know, I didn't know any special particular order or anything. I saw like, huh, you know, group of people, you know, go to try. Right. So, but it intrigued me. Like uh, reading, rereading it now, like how it opens and stuff. I mean, that was my first depiction of Exo Manowar as this floating sort of like godlike character and as a villain. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So that was my first impression to him. So I kind of got it. Uh, what's called based on the other ones later. That's kind of like ah, okay, no. So he's supposed to be a hero or something like that. But even with all this kind of confusion, even with that little. Um, quick um what's called recap in the beginning like mm -hmm. super super quick you know i was kind of like okay i don't know who this guy is you know who turns out to be ninjak you know and then like eli like the whole thing with his broken arm you know didn't didn't read a volume four of exo man of war so i don't know where that right. came from and but i liked he, he was so mysterious to me from what he was depicted like the scenes with him in this volume yeah, where he was talking about how yeah, because without know, all really, the stuff that he's done, yeah, exactly, without really downright saying he's immortal or you know like he's so eternal in that sense, I you kind of got an impression about that. I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. okay, interesting. Again, it was very Harada too. Like you know, I had no idea really who he was. So for me, he was just a good guy at first. You know, because like okay, so he's kind of like an interesting guy. Oh, because he's sort of sort of psychic kind of guy. Like this was my the valiant in a sense, you know, which I tried mm -hmm. to use for on you to get you interested, right? So, um, live wire as well. You're just kind of like, oh, okay, kind of interesting. Again, had no idea what this baggage she, she had with him, but in a way, I kind of like that because that's how I often feel when I read a Marvel or DC comic, right? Right. And unless it's something like really, you know, like you know, like a really like inside joke or I really should have read the previous things. It just feels like I'm part of a constant, constantly moving world. You know what I mean? Like it's like, I like when we hear about things about the uh, superhero comics as current events. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just kind of like, oh yeah, did you hear, you know, uh, Spider-Man uh, got his brain replaced by Dr. Octopus. What, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not actually Peter Parker anymore. It's now uh, Doc Ock as, Sp as Spider-Man. You know, like, oh, it's like a news event kind of sort of. And I don't even mean right. like those when yeah. there actually are, you know, like when Superman died and stuff like that. It's just kind of like, oh, it's, it's, it's going on. It's continuing regardless if I'm buying the books or not. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how I felt reading the first, uh, I think I read the first or two, either just the first one or the second issue as well before I switched to the other PDFs I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, seeing w with my bad memory for characters and, you know, all this kind of stuff, I didn't know who Livewire was either anymore. Like, I didn't know what had actually happened between them mm. or why she was in exile. But I like this idea that it's more... It's mystery, not confusion. Mm. And I think that's something that's very important for writers to think of when they're making these or, or to kind of check of their writing. Is this just mystery or is it confusion? And so like with this comic, it's mostly just mystery. And I think even, you know, I think this is a strength of this comic is that someone who 
hasn't read anything before can pick this up and still enjoy it, just like me. I mean, I didn't know the backstory of a lot of these characters, like with Livewire, but I could still enjoy it because, um, you know, because because they had written in this mystery of it, not a confusion. So it wasn't didn't assume that you knew the backstory. They told you that there was a backstory, and then they just let it go. And for me, it was just like, okay, cool. There's a backstory. Let's move on. Exactly. And like for me too, like even when they like name drop stuff, like when Harada mentions Peter Stanchek, you know, again, I hadn't read Harbinger, so who the hell is exactly. Peter Stanchek? But I don't know. It's 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 something important that happened. I'm sure. You know, I'll, yes. I'll get to that later. Exactly. I don't know. I guess rereading it now, though, is kind of like, oh man, this was a good start. Like, um, like you know, for me in a sense, because I can't remember the specific one I started with, but I think it must have been this one because I remember not knowing any of the characters. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't have started with Exo Manowar because then I would have known who this guy was. You know, even if I don't know like why he was there. And, you know, I couldn't have, well, obviously with Ninjak, actually, yeah, considering all the other characters are are introduced in the second volumes of the other series, you know, then it's like, uh, yeah, I couldn't know any of them. So, but yeah, no, it's, uh, so I'm glad you liked it in that sense. You know, since, especially yeah, since I this mean, is was... their, this is Valiant's Justice League slash Avengers. Oh, really? Okay. Um, well, uh, it's interesting. I mean, I like the characters, and I think the group is going to this is going to be interesting. Um, but here's something that I I'm kind of feeling like it's going to be a pattern with Valiant. Okay. The introduction of a lot of characters and then killing them off right away. I have that as a point here. So you you, you basically asked it yourself now. Okay. You mean you mean the big splash page of this is Unity. Right, and then literally next page they all die, or not literally, but yeah, yeah, actually pretty much literally next page they die. Um, well, again, they're red shirts; they're there to show how dangerous he is. Yeah, I know, but I mean that's the thing with red shirts—you didn't give red shirts a backstory. Mm, we as we as you know what I mean? Yeah, we as sympathize with them as humans. Like, oh no, this is dangerous. Exactly, but these are not red shirts. These are like, you know, you're introducing the new guy with all these awesome superpowers and everything is great and awesome and they look at all these things that they can do and how cool it's going to be that this that ether can then connect to the machine or the, mm. the suit and then you know mirror can you know whatever and then they just all die and part of me i mean <laughs> this is i actually felt kind of betrayed because you know how i just hate reading walls of text mm. uh, in comics so i got to this page and i kind of moved over to the next page right away, kind of like, oh, okay, they're going to just, you know, describe what their powers are. I'm, I guess I'm going to find out <laughs> during the comic or during the fight. But then I thought to myself, like, no, you know what? I need to read this. I need to actually read this so that I know <laughs> because I remember them. last time, because I remember last time I didn't read the description of their powers and I was confused. So, okay, let's read the powers. And when I was reading, I was thinking a little bit, this sounds very deviant art OC. Mm. You know, like just these, yeah, the, the way that they describe the characters. No, but I, I, I agree. It is kind of like this, uh, oh yeah, this is my, um, this is um, the bomb. She does this and that and has this. Yeah. And then and then just to see them die in the next two pages, I was just like, ah, all right. Well, well that was, that. that was a betrayal. I could have skipped that, yeah. Um, But while we're on the subject of those original characters... Can you explain to me what happened in the last issue um, with the um, with the anchor? Oh yeah. Well, it depends. So, what do you mean? Well, um, well, I guess I guess now that I'm looking at, at it, I guess I understand it now, but. It doesn't really make sense when I was reading it the first time. Now that I'm looking at it again, kind of analyzing it, then I, I think I get it. But it says, it says on that page, are you on the page? Let's see. 89? 89? Yeah. It says, how are the global conglom conglomerates now? And we see Anchor sitting there saying, miss you guys. And then he 
gets all happy or looks happier and then the, all these characters that are actually dead are now fighting him mm, yeah yeah because it says now and then there's a flashback <laughs> exactly and it doesn't <laughs> I, I tell us that there's a flashback that, but yeah that's yeah, I mean, and there's no even if they, real even if they color it, change either. Yeah, but even huh? if they said it was a flashback, it's just, she would feel so stupid to like, now, I miss you Exactly. Guys. Flashback. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and it's just so weird. And I mean, now that I'm looking at it, I do realize that it's a flashback, but nowhere does it give you any information that it's a flashback. So I thought that something had happened, like those characters came back to life or something. But then they were talking about going on this mission that, and I was like, wait, so this is the past? But why did it say now? And then it, then a page later on 91, this it says now, now again. <laughs> and then I was just like, ah, oh, come on. I think I think Valiant needs to get their timelines in order. Like Especially how they for such a bring short it across. thing. Like this could... Yeah. I mean, I think if the yes didn't say now, I guess yes would have been fine, right? Exactly. I mean... Or, or you just start off in the flashback. Mm. You know, the whole miss you guys thing could have, could have also been done at the end. You know, when it goes back to the whole now thing. I mean, th this this kind of stuff happened. This kind of stuff is easier in TV, like in live action, mm. because you can actually change the color of the, um, like like the surrounding color. You can change the the, the tint to make it look like a different time. But because it was he was being fired at, it changed the color of the or the tint of the um the panel. So I have no idea if if it's now if he's now gone to a flashback or whatever. So I think this is a very TV thing that they did in comics and I don't think it works that well. No, I get that. Again, it's one of those things I didn't think about, maybe both because I've already read it. You know, so it's, you know, I'm, I'm more like uh, reaffirming things I knew. But uh, you're right. The, the way it's like told there, it's, it does feel silly, if nothing else, with this whole now. <laughs> I don't know, almost yeah. not re it's not really the same thing, but it reminds me of that uh, episode of Pokemon Black and White. When the, what's called the, the trade the opponent takes out, uh, uh, takes out a Servine. So, Go Servine! Servine, Servine, a Servine. Then it's commercial break. Who's that Pokemon? It's Servine. And then it comes back and then, Servine, Servine, Servine. I don't know, just a repeat of this whole like now there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I realized now that was just me sharing something stupid. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways. Uh, yeah, well, back to the questions. So. Yeah, now I kind of lost it there on the... Uh, because you, you had <laughs> a thing there. Right, it was the, no, it's the ones getting killed off and stuff. That was the thing you said that... Yeah. No, I agree with that. And um, just to bring up like another tangential thing, and be glad you haven't read uh, uh, DC's uh, 52. That is 52, not New 52. Mm-hmm. So, because they, um, they had this whole thing going on there... Where Lex Luthor was giving all these uh, normal humans uh, powers, and there's this one like issue where all these like new superheroes emerge, and it's like basically just a double page a splash panel of all these like new costumes and characters and names, and they basically all die. <laughs> I mean, again, it's, it's, it's kind of done more, it, it works better there, I feel, since it's no build-up, because they kind of like, it's basically like everyone's doing the Superman thing, you know, like pulling yeah. the shirt off to show their like, so it's basically like all of these like, they must have had a lot of fun designing them. <laughs> but I was kind of like, oh, what a way, I mean, not so much about I was interested in that specific character, but maybe that costume or name or power. Yeah, and now it's kind of been wasted on a you know on one page. I don't know. It's... But then another question, just in terms of both, since we were kind of talking about confusion there, were you confused a little bit by this uh, volume? Well, in what sense? Well, in issue three, for example. <laughs> the way it starts. I need a little bit more. <laughs> no, but the the first page when it starts. 
or like second page or so when everyone's underwater so yeah well um basically this uh, there's sort of a reading order here where once you kind of be alternating between uh, unity and exo mana war oh uh, no, I wasn't confused at all. Well, that's good. No, but consider this. Um, they're mentioning that Auric was controlling uh, the Exo Mana War armor from uh, what's called Livewire. And that they were like, he, he was forcing her to attack the, you know, Harada and uh, Ninjak and Gilad. Wait, in between volume two and three, or you mean? Yeah, issue, yeah. Oh, yeah, issue, yeah. No, I mean, I didn't even pick up on that. So, because they because they mention it, yeah, yeah, but I mean, so you don't you, oh, you, you didn't feel like there was something missing, like suddenly, oh wait, what what happened in between here? No, because all I see is a ship falling into the ocean, and then them struggling to fight against the water coming in. All right, yeah, no, I no, mean, like that's... there was, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure if I missed, I just missed something. No, but it's more about like the what's called like the last pages of the um, uh, issue two, because we see you know Livewire, uh, uh, you know stealing the armor from Ar Auric. Yeah, yeah. And then we're seeing this whole. Um, I mean, I, now I'm looking at it. Yeah, I guess it's not, it's not like a big hole or anything. Yes, some of the dialogue that hints that something happened. So you know, it definitely works as its own volume. Though, I, if I remember correctly, the next one we'll be reading, which is. Um, Exo Man of War Volume 5, which is then his side, like, his point of view of all this. Oh, God, we're going to do another one of those? Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, and if I remember correctly when I read that, it did feel a bit more like... Okay, yeah, now this is where all the Unity stuff was happening. All right, then. No, but that's good. And because I, I felt so myself, except for I noticed more about the idea that something was missing. So, but it worked out, then. You know, I was just curious if you were reacted to it. No, I didn't. I mean, I didn't even recognize that there was anything missing. I oh. mean, I guess, um, you know, when... I mean, and I'm looking at one panel where it says Eric was still bonded to the armor. He was controlling it. Me. Um, I thought that was just a generic shot of the fight that they had mm. in Volume 2. I didn't think that it was, like, something in between. So I just thought it was, like... Um, like something that happened in volume two or when they were, or in issue two when they were fighting while it was still in the air or in, the, in space. All right. No, so I didn't sense. think at, at all about it. All right. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, again, I think it's a good thing. I was curious if you were or not. Also something that I thought and I wanted to see if you um, agreed in a sense. Um, do you think it's what's called an apt comparison to what's called the Exo Mana War would be Namor from Marvel? I felt like this whole story felt like a very Namor story, like with him sort of attacking the surface uh, world and sort of like ignoring like sovereignty of you know the of Earth because he doesn't care about what the countries and politics they have, and then having like the heroes of the world attacking him. I don't know. I think it's yes, very um, surface level of that. Yeah, I think it's very surf surface level because, I mean, Namor, he understands the politics of the new world. He doesn't, he just doesn't care. He doesn't care. That's like a, a conscious decision that he's making. I think Eric just, just wants well, to take what's rightfully his. Well, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't know to what these countries are called or. Exactly. I mean, he probably didn't know to what's rules. more to the world than what's. You know, I mean, there yeah. was no America for him when he was alive, or exactly. And he doesn't understand the idea of having like invisible borders. I mm. mean, he he, I think, understands you know borders, but more as like walls around a city or you know certain controlled areas. But you know, when he lands in an area, he believes he can just take it, and if someone tries to fight him off, he'll fight back. So I think I think you can't really compare them. I mean. You can compare them in the sense of like that they're both barbarians in some sense. Yeah, and we have royal, like, yes, royal blood yeah, as well. Royalty, yeah, yeah, barbarian royalty, and they like to fight. That's I think the only way you can compare mm -hmm. them. But then again, you can compare that to pretty much any barbarian royalty 
which we know so many <laughs> of. Yeah, no, but I, I get what you mean. I guess for me it was just because uh, I, I like Namor's like plots a lot. So when he just like attacks the surface world, and I've yeah. just thought this was kind of reminiscent of that. But you're right; it's more of a surface level thing. But on another parallel, have you ever read the original first Avengers issue? Nope. So I felt this was like a nice parallel to that. Because uh, as you might know, the movie, The Avengers, was kind of based on the first issue of Avengers. In terms of like some portions of like the plot there, in terms of who the villain was and stuff like that. But I kind of like okay. the spin on it here, because... Um, because instead of like uh, having all the good guys get together and um, fight the bad guy, it's basically some of some good guys and the bad guy get together to fight the good guy doing bad. And at the end, it's basically now an organization of what's called the where the bad guy is now you know off there, and now the guy they were fighting is part of the group in a sense. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt it has a little bit. It wasn't as simple as two sides. But like, you know, sort of free sides in a sense. I don't know, I guess it was just something that I noticed when I was reading it, because it was kind of similar with, okay, there's a big thing happening, and there's a, it's a big enough reason for all these other heroes to get together. Yeah, but I think, again, it's like a typical, like I said at the beginning, it's just a typical superhero comic. So, but that brings so up I guess you can compare this with a lot of different comics. I mean, there's probably a Justice League issue that you can also compare it to. There's probably also any other, like a, probably a Fantastic Four comic that you can also compare it to. But that brings it I up think, then. Um, yeah. No, because I, I was, think, I was uh, thinking about this as I was reading it, because I really liked this volume. And it was, and it also, like you said, it was very superhero-y. I'm trying to think then, what makes it superhero-y? I mean, because we've been reading a lot of these superhero comics. But this one felt very superhero-y. What was it that made that? Well, I just think it has to do with the... It's, you know, people fighting together. I mean, yeah, I guess... Uh, yeah, it's kind of a hard question, I guess, to answer. No, but you but, see what I mean, because like Harbinger, you yeah, know, yeah. sure, it's, um, you know, it's superheroes, but it, it's more of a... I wouldn't say a drama, but it's more of like this sort of politics thingy with Harada. Yeah. You know, and Bloodshot's a lot more on this sort of like action movie stuff. Well, I guess I guess this feels very classically superheroes because you have these this this group of people who have powers and we didn't go too deep into their like into their psyches and into their characters. We just met them and they just kicked ass, you know? You're right. It's, it's it was very it was very plot like very plot uh, heavy. Would, would it be plot-heavy or yes, very plot-centered? Yeah, I think it's just more plot-centered. I mean, because again, no one, they didn't have much time to just kind of sit there and discuss or to have all these thoughts and feelings. Yeah, Livewire like got some like flashback, like we got into her character, which was necessary since she's the one, um, if we, you know, we have read all these other characters, but right, she's the but one who we knew least like about. A page or a page and a half, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, but still, you know, so, enough. Yeah, yeah. So it was just very quick. I mean, but again, if this was like a, if this was a live wire comic, it would have gone much deeper into all of her psychological things, and the plot would have been a little bit on the side. But yeah, I guess I guess that's that's why it feels so superhero ways because it starts off with a a bad guy, then you're going in, and then everything is solved at the end. So it all has like this happy ending. So yeah, it just feels with, with, plot, with plot hooks as well for more stuff. Exactly, yeah. Mm, yeah, no, because yes, it's one of those things where you, uh, as I, you know, like, oh yeah, it feels like this, but why does it feel like this? So it's, it's, it's like we were mentioning with Shadow Man, too, you know, with how that felt very, very classic superhero-like. You know, how, how it was like ready to become a CW show. Yeah. Because like, oh yeah, here's, here's the hero, he's got his powers, here's his supporting cast, and these are the bad guys that'll come and get him. So, and then this one felt very like that. I mean, it, it reminded me a bit when, you know, like when watching Justice League or Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It's just cool seeing these characters interacting, working together. I don't know, it's just like, I felt really good reading it. 
Like it, 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 it scratched this itch. So this like superhero itch, and uh, I don't know. It's been a while since I read something. Again, I've read many good things, but it's, it's been a while since I read a good like superhero story. Mm. All right, but uh, let's see. Um, why? Uh, what's called? Uh, I thought we'd uh, discuss Livewire a bit, since she was, you know, this was her true introduction, you could say, since you couldn't even remember her from Harbinger. Yeah. So what do you think of her now, you know, being kind of like on the big, what's called, Justice League team, in a sense, of the Valiant universe? I like her. Well, again, I like her for who she is right now. I mean, I don't remember much of her backstory. It, it wasn't her. much uh, before. She was she was the one who let uh, Peter go. So Sure. <laughs> I mean, again, I don't remember at all. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a lot. And, and it also showed, in, I think it was volume two or three, we got to see, like, um, her in that little cabin where she was in exile. Mm. Yeah, I think I remember that somehow. But yeah, so um, I, I like her as like a character. I like love the idea that she has this connection to electronics and that she can uh, control the Man of War suit. Mm, I also like that stuff too when there's sort of, um, I mean, here's a lot more planned than like it was like in the old comics where the people found connections later. But like here is like, yeah, yeah, this makes sense. You know, her power should have some effect on him. Right. But I also like that it's different, that it's not just she can control it, she's kind of fighting it as well. And and I like that she's also a, a good person. Again, it's just like the, the clean-cut superhero that I like. Mm. Um, yeah, like even though yeah, she but, respects Harada, she disobeyed him in Harbinger because, you know, so what you did was wrong. Exactly. And also when she goes and saves the Visigoths, uh, mm. like she said, you know, innocent Visigoths, um, and then she was also the one, it seemed, who kind of uh, pushed for um, the team to go after Harada again to take back the suit. Um, it also seemed that she was then the one who kind of decided to bring the suit back to Eric. And like, and she was the one who was saying that, you know, rather have a, a strong ally than a weak enemy or something like that. Mm, well, yeah, making him, well, no, yeah, but, you know, why have an enemy when we can have an ally? Right, exactly, yeah. Though it, and so I, though it is one yeah, of those really things, like though, that, that, you know, it's, it's kind of like this, I call it kind of like the Iron Man conundrum. I guess you could call it the Green Lantern one, too. You know, when the power comes from a thing that can be made or, you know, that exists and anyone can use it, why should it be this character who uses it? Well, I mean, that's what she was saying too, wasn't she? Oh yeah, you know, he she hadn't earned it. He had. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, it's the same thing with the Green Lantern ring. You, not anyone, not just everyone can use the Green Lantern ring. Well, yeah, and of course, you know, it's uh, only those with strong will. But it's like kind yeah. of like the, and I mean, Iron, the Iron Man suit. suit is something else. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? It's where like, um, and again, it's it's kind of a bit of a splitting hair sometimes because um, again, it's. It feels like it's kind of like we're trying to dismiss characters who have powers like that. But it's just kind of, I always think like, okay, it's kind of like an Iron Man 2 in a way. Should we really leave this weapon with this drunk, uh, what's called, crazy guy? Or maybe make give it to, you know, a proper soldier? Yeah, but wasn't that kind of like the plot of Iron Man 2? Exactly, that's what I mean. It was like Iron Man 2. You know, the, the, um, that's what I mean, is the kind of stuff like, okay, maybe we should give the, the Exo Man Award to someone more responsible. Now, again, I, you know, I like Auric and stuff, but it's what I guess mean is sometimes, why does this but character thought, have it? But I thought the Exo Man Award suit does not work on everyone. Well, that's, uh, we're going to get into that, Chris. So, oh. so we, and we're going to get into that with the next event once it comes along. Well, because that was wasn't that the whole big deal that when with the vine, with the vine that they couldn't melt with it, they constantly killed so, them. But then, Eric but Livewire and then, could. And yeah, but Livewire had the had the power. Where but remember she also, the suit. remember also in Exo Man of War Volume Two, his uh, friend. I don't. <laughs> no, but remember his friend, uh, uh, Arik's friend. Like he was hurt, so no. he let him. So he he allowed the Exo Man of War to, you know, he gave it to him so it could heal him. You know, then yeah, fought. but again, that was yeah, but that was then also Eric kind of giving him, like telling the suit not to kill the the guy. I get it. It's gonna it's gonna come up. Yeah, 
So it's, it's a. I actually really like what they do with that. It's okay. It's hard to tell if it's pre-planned or if it just fits. I almost prefer it when it's an accident sometimes, because it just feels like that it was meant to be. But yeah, it'll, it'll come up. It's actually in one of the in the new humble bundle. They actually have this, this big deluxe edition thing. I was actually. Oh yeah, I, I, saw was, I was thinking if we should uh, read that instead, but that would be like a huge podcast then because it's like a lot of issues. But it's basically the whole event in one book. Oh Jesus! And and if and you know like Harb, you know how Harbinger Wars was kind of like small. It was like two series to sp- crossover, cr- crossover, mm-hmm. crossing over. This is like almost all the Valiant properties. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's why you have to spend 25 bucks for that comic. Mm. So, but I will anyways. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, no, I think we've gone through most of it, actually. Um, so, I mean, uh, not so much about any specific scenes and such. I mean, I really like... Um, I really like Ninjak's inclusion in this, for example. Um, it's nice having someone who is vulnerable, even if he is, you know, like the Batman vulnerable. So, you know, like, um, you know, like, it's like, luckily I have this super high gadget and this hyper frequency sword that blocked it, you know. It meant the broken ribs instead of, you know, fist through my body. But I like that stuff because it shows a different kind of, it just shows different fighting styles and different, like, strategies involved, yeah. I mean, the, the the only ninjak that I've ever kind of met before was when, uh, when was it? Was it with, who was it with? Well, he, who, he was we, in, what, was he in Exo Manowar? Yeah, the volume two. Enter Ninja. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, 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 okay. But that made sense too. You know, he's the only one of them who had faced him before. So that was also. Yeah, yeah so no, much. no. I mean, um, I just couldn't remember who the character was, but, um. Yeah, I remember seeing him, and I thought he was kind of cool, you know, like, okay, uh, you know, typical, kind of like, white guy with the Asian uh, martial arts and stuff like that. Um, but I didn't realize how much of a douchebag he was. Mm, you mean the, the cafe? Yeah, that made him very unlikable to me, so... I well, mean, it's, it's I always thought that like, he was like, like this... <laughs> Yeah, but I thought, you know, because I thought he was going to be like the, the Bruce Wayne, you know, mm. the Batman. Like, the um, Bruce Wayne would have left a big tip there before he left. Exactly, and he would have also not been a dick about it. You know, he he would have been, you know, suave and whatever and um, maybe make a joke about what the stuff looks like or something like that, but he wouldn't kind of insult it or whatever. Um but with him, it just felt like he was just being a dick, and he's just a dick. Welcome he to the Valiant Universe. <laughs> yeah, I no, guess. But it, no, but it seems to be a very common trend <laughs> in our discussions. Yeah, this guy's unlikable. Oh, this guy's mean. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I, li- I like it, because it's... In, I was going to say he's kind of like the to- like token kind of like jerk on the team. So, But they also have Auric on the team, so it's kind of... Uh, well, you know, eventually. So who who is the group now? Is it just Eric, Ek, or like Exo Man of War, Ninjak, Gilad, and Livewire? Yep. So or it's just is four. Harada also part of it. No, no. I mean Harada's. You know the what's it called curses them at the end. You know, does it like? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I. But I mean, he was the... part of it at first. You know, you, you could say a founding member if you want to call it that. Yeah. Well, because just at, in the um, like the the all the art, the cover art later. You know, he still seems part of it, even though, um, you know what I mean? Like, like it, it just looks like he's continue. He's going to continue to be part of the team. So yeah. Oh, you mean like all the variant covers, or yeah, yeah. Well, again, I guess it depends on which issues they are supposed to be. I think like the first three issues make sense, but then there's other ones that don't really make sense, like the one on page 118 because it has all of them. Yeah, and actually, which that's yeah, Unity. Uh, that's uh, number two, issue two, which doesn't make sense. Yeah, even yeah, but even Unity number one doesn't make sense because Exo Manowar is also there, mm. like on their side. So exactly, and again, there are variants, and as we've always, I mean, also if we look at uh, page one hundred twenty-one uh, for issue three, uh, 
you're like, he didn't actually kill all of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is my usual complaint I've had, as you know. But especially really like the, the um, variant for Unity Four that looks really nice. Uh, which one? Page one hundred twenty-two. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice, a little artsy, artsy fartsy. But um, do you notice something with some of these variants? What's that? Uh, what's called Gilad's costume? Yeah, yeah, it's always the old school one. Well, not always. Well, not Someone. always. No, it's always changing. Yeah. So uh, I'm wondering well, if it was... it's always different. Well, again, like because you remember, you know, the way he looked in Archer and Armstrong Volume Two, it was that costume. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm yeah. wondering if it was some. I don't know. I was curious if it was kind of like they were keeping to the original design from the '90s, and then we're kind of like, you know what? We, I kind of like this hood and axe thing better. Mm -hmm. So and then they like did that, but then they maybe already had commissioned had or yeah, you know, yeah. Like, paid for this art. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Because I was gonna say also, as you mentioned, because when you mentioned like the covers don't imply that, and I was thinking in terms of you know if Harada's part of it or not, and I was kind of like, well, issue four, you know, kind of shows you know, with Ninja, you know, like about to stab him. So, but I gotta say, it's one of these things I just really like with Harada's presence, because I normally don't like it when um, what's called when like a superhero character doesn't have a costume. I don't know, I feel... Yeah, but, but his suit and tie has become kind of his costume, you know? Well, exactly. Yeah, but it works so well with his character. I mean, he is a legitimate businessman, you know? Well, I wouldn't call it legitimate if you know what I mean. Or... Well, true, if he's using his psychic powers to make people go ahead with deals and stuff that he wouldn't otherwise. But it's for yeah. the greater good. <laughs> the greater good. Exactly. No, but it, but it looks really cool, I feel, in contrast. Like, all of these, like, both on the covers and in the comic itself, you know, like group shots. I don't know, it just looks really cool having this like, you know, smart dressed uh, man, you know, kind of like with glowing eyes being there. Because everyone else is yeah. a bit more outlandish and then he's kind of there more proper. And I don't know, it, just, it works really well, I feel. Because I don't know, because I like costumes, you know, I, I like us, that's, that's part of it, I feel. So, you know, when they don't have it, I usually get a bit disappointed, but it works really well here. So, but I was thinking we could, uh, what's called, any thoughts on the art this time? Because, I, I mean, last time, you know, it was a big uh, discussion about it. And I thought it could actually be nice if we discussed the art a bit as well in these episodes. Yeah, I mean... Because, I mean, that's I, a big I, part of a comic, so... Right, well, I mean, let's say the art was so good that I didn't have to, like, I didn't you know, mention, or I didn't have to mention it, you know? So it was, it wasn't like otherworldly, but it wasn't amateurish either, you know? No, it's, so it's, it's very just, solid. Yeah, it's just very solid art that the kind of stuff that I want to, that I want to see and expect to see in a comic. So it seems like it's kind of a bit of a, um, it feels very sort of like, um, obviously it's been inked, but it feels very pencil line-ish. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it feels like they kind of left some construction sometimes. You know, then, like, colored oak, kind of like they put the sketch layer and then, you know, multiply and colored mm -hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. And I like that. It just it feels more... I mean, I like the kind of, like, this strong, you know, like, with a nice incline and, you know, like, sharp colors. Mm -hmm. Kind of like uh, Clayton Henry, you know, in, in the first volume of um, Archer and Armstrong. You know, it's like a very nice, you know, like very good, solid, like superhero style. Mm -hmm. So, but here, I don't know, it, it, it felt better with the sort of drama in this one and like the action. Exactly. I mean, that's what I mean. I think, I think the reason why our last volume from Quantum and Woody wasn't that well drawn is because I guess the art is kind of a secondary in a comedy because it's more the writing, I guess, that will make it funny. Mm, definitely, and that's what helped with me there. As I said, you know, I didn't even think about the art really; that it was right. uh, subpar. But I mean, looking at all these, like, I'm kind of flipping through the pages right now, and I mean, there's no, it does nothing stands out where like the, um, where the proportions are broken or, like, it's not on model anymore or anything like that. I mean, it looks all just perfect, actually. Yeah, it was very and, well drawn. 
yeah, it's really well drawn, and it's kind of a it's, it's kind of a shame that you know I, it took you mentioning it uh, for me to actually start talking about the art because again, it's just sad that we talk about the bad things of something, but we don't mention the good things. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about mentioning it because I was like, yes, this is what I expect. Yeah, no, but, but I mean, yeah, that's the beautiful. thing, though, and I think that's also. Also, I mean, obviously, you know, comics are a visual art, but I feel it's comics are a lot more on the literature side than on like, you know, the, the what's called um, the visual art side, I feel. Yeah. Because in the end, it's a story being told and not to say, you know, a story can't be told in a single image or anything. But the way we are telling a story here, it is basically a book. It's just we're, you know, we're removing all the big, you know, paragraphs of description of the environments and actions yeah, exactly. and telling them through pictures. And then through there using, you know, the, you know, the unique crafting of comics to tell it as well as possible. So, and again, I, I think we should try discussing the, you know, we basically discussed the plot by and writing by default. By discussing, you know, the character interactions, um, development, and the plot itself. I think, you know, the artists definitely deserve a mention as well each time. Oh, yeah. At oh, the very yeah. least, when it's a new one. You know, like, maybe if we've already discussed, like, you know, Clayton Henry or something, uh, then we're like, well, unless it's he really does something bad or good this time, there's not much to discuss except he's doing a good job. But I also feel, as I was mentioning, you know, this was, I think, my first uh, Valiant thing I actually properly started reading, even if I don't, didn't finish it at first. And looking like at this start there, you know, okay, it's got a little, um, what's called, uh, a little cafe thing. Oh, what's going on? Some soldier, you know, pushes that woman down to save her. Oh, a big, big ass, like, robot thing coming in. Like, oh, this looks, oh, this looks really epic and cool. So, and then... Like I said, that big shot of uh, what's called uh, Exo Man of War coming down there holding a what's called missile in his hand. It's like, oh, so cool. <laughs> like the art, no, but like the art really sells it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So like there's, there's this extra layer to it. Because, you know, you could have told this with a more like sort of classic style. Like, you know, I mean, you could have done this kind of like in a Silver Age comic. But with the kind of printing they had back then and like the coloring uh, the techniques. He just wouldn't have had the same layer that this does. I mean, these digital effects they put on here, like with the lighting, these kind of like, um, I don't know, it just really feels good. Like, it really feels big. So, yeah, I don't know. That's, uh, I guess, uh, that's me gushing about the art. Big no, again, it's a, it's a great looking panel. I mean, you could maybe even talk about some sort of Jesus metaphors here. <laughs> I am the... Jesus. I am Jesus. I am... Right. And with the breaking of the clouds and it kind of like illuminating behind him and, you know, but we don't so... need to go into that. No, you're right. But the uh, big uh, hats off to Doug Bri 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 Braithwaite. 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 Hats off to Doug. Hats off to Doug. So, yeah, yeah, but I think that's about it. And uh, it's, I mean, it was a very sort of simple story in the end. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely prepares for some more stuff. You know, now that we have a super team that isn't the Renegades, you know, it's kind of like uh, it's going to be some fun adventures coming forward. I think yeah, that, I, I think Unity actually, uh, what's it called, it's been canceled uh, a while back. So I mean, it still exists in universe, but the Asian like the comic doesn't. So, but I, I, I liked it because when you have a team, you, you kind of get the best of everyone in a sense. Yeah. You know, like I mean, obviously, yeah, I like seeing solo stories of characters, but I don't know, it's kind of fun. You get, you know, you get to have both your ninja goodness and Livewire doing her thing, and Gilad mentioning, "Oh, this is like that war." You know, it's, yeah, but not. But you don't go way too deep into it, so it can't be like ruined by something, you know, something else. You know, exactly. Like, I mean, that's the thing because I mean, especially with with Gilad being part of it, I know that I will always enjoy his scenes, so I'll always look forward to it. Mm -hmm. So if if there's some, like, I mean, just 
as an example, like if we're reading a comic that I just do not enjoy, I'm going to start just like with last week's comic. You know, just start looking at the page numbers and be like, oh, God, when is this finally over? And, you know, just like what I was saying with always what I always say with those uh, South Park episodes, Mm. you know, it used to be when they were just doing single stories, when they then started doing a part one, part two, part three, whatever, and I didn't enjoy it, I knew that for the next two or three weeks, I wouldn't enjoy the South Park episodes. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't like kind of like, okay, you know, didn't like it. Next time, you know, I'm just as excited because it's going to be something different. Then I'm, right, it's a fresh It might be start. good. Yeah. yeah. So with, with something like this, with, with the Unity, I always felt like, okay, every issue in this volume is, so to speak, a fresh start because they might be focusing on a different character. You know, or maybe Ninjak won't be that present in this chapter, or something, something like that. Or maybe so he'll grow on nice you. Having a, huh? Or maybe he'll grow on you. Yeah, maybe. But uh, yeah, I still think it's kind of weird that he's not Asian. <laughs> so, yeah, it's one it just of those feels wrong. Yeah, but you know, it's like the whole Iron Fist debacle. Um, it's good. And regarding that, um, I honestly think you know what the greatest uh, like uh, compromise of that would be. What? Asian American, but he's like super American, so he doesn't know about his heritage. So that like you basically get the white guy in an Asian culture thing, but it's like he's Asian, like you know he's Asian looking. So it's kind of like the idea of like I, oh, I feel know like this. that's a hmm? I feel like that's a kind of racism, but I'm not sure which one. <laughs> no, no, but you know because like, you're just like no, 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 it's fine. We'll just make give him slanty eyes, and then we'll make him American, but just make him look Japanese, and it's fine. <laughs> So, no, but I, again, it's, uh, I just think that could give it, like, an extra texture to it. Like, it's the same character. Yeah. But by doing this, we kind of get, like, an extra little layer on top of it. But anyways, we'll see how it goes. I mean, yeah. the, the great thing, I mean, Mar- Marvel's got me by the balls. Because it's basically, <laughs> no, but it's basically, I feel forced to watch everything they have almost. Except Agents of yeah, S.H.I.E.L.D., they, they can't, <laughs> that's, like, yeah. that's the only thing that I feel is not unwatchable, but just boring i don't care <laughs> well i think you just missed the jump, jumping on point with that because i mean i think i think you've just heard so much bad stuff about it. i think you no, tried but even when i watched because and... i was so really hyped remember when it was like gonna come out and stuff it was like oh you know this is yeah. gonna be so cool and then like yeah it's you know it really feels like the tv version of <laughs> yeah. you know them name dropping stuff and going like oh yeah remember that movie we just watched yeah this is like us cleaning up after it yeah. Well, I mean, I watched until the end of season two, I think, but I just didn't continue watching it either. I'm curious about the Inhuman stuff, because, you know, since you're pushing it and stuff like that, but yeah, whatever. But that's yeah. what I mean. I mean like, I, I, strugg- I, I struggle, I struggled with, um, I actually did struggle with Daredevil season two. Oh, really? Uh, I str- I'm struggling with um, Luke Cage. Oh. And I'm also really, I also really struggled with, um, uh, Jessica Jones. Jones. Thank you. Um, again, I, I don't know if it's just because I don't like the I don't like the stories that they're telling, or if I am just getting too overloaded with all this stuff. Or maybe it has to do with just I don't have time to watch a a forty five minute to an hour mm. show every day. Or like once a week even. Mm. So I mean I've been actually making a, a huge point out of during the weekdays to watch one show or one one episode of a 45 minute like an hour long show in the evening so once i'm done with man in the high castle season two i'll start watching luke cage again but i think from looking at the trailers i think um i'll really like uh iron fist so yeah again because i i mean it kind of kind of goes into this kind of stuff that i like anyway you know the the martial arts stuff and the Mm. mysticism and stuff like that no no definitely So, but like I said, for me, it's, um, you know, they, they got me like hooked and I don't want like to miss anything really. Yeah. You know, like even if it's, you know, I want to be able to, for every small reference they have, I want to be able to, ah, I know what they're mentioning. I know what they're talking about. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be outside of the joke. You know, I want to be in on it. Anyways. Yeah. But we still both missed uh, uh, Doctor Strange. Yeah, it's just I have trouble. I, I watched uh, f- um, the Ford of Dark World in Toronto alone because I was alone. <laughs> Aww. So, no, but, you know, I couldn't really get anyone um, 
to spend their precious weekend uh, or even maybe even in the weekday maybe it was i can't remember to go see like a superhero movie with me but like uh, in sweden i was kind of like oh come on people and like yeah some people were interested but some were busy and then it kind of was running out and then it wasn't showing in my local cinema so then it was even less chance of people seeing because then we had to go to like yeah. big one and then like it's gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the same with me, you know, just, I mean, not that I can't get anyone to go with me. It's just that, you know, you just don't have the time and, you know, mm. we, we kind of have to find a, a babysitter for the dog and stuff like that. And then it's always like an extra thing. And yeah. So, ah, well, if nothing else, depending on when we meet up, you know, maybe, maybe we can watch on DVD or something along with whatever new movies on <laughs> DVD, theaters. Blu-ray, come on. Blu-ray streaming. It's... <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap up this episode. We're talking about talking about Valiant anymore. Mm, yeah, true. As per usual, that seems to be our MO. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, that was the 23rd episode of Hardcast, detailing the Unity Volume 1. For more content from me and Chris, follow us on Twitter at Humphrey underscore Erm and at Christian D. Claus. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or listen to us directly on valianthardcast.podbean.com. Remember to like us on facebook.com slash valiantheartcast. Catch us later for our next episode.